Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA a certification training course on common operational issues. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to focus on the requirements from our CompTIA a 22702. That's our practical application exam in section 2.4. And we're going to look at operational problems like Windows specific printing problems, restarting errors, blue screening errors, system lockups. These are things you run into all the time. And whenever they occur, we're going to need to focus on how we can identify the information we need to resolve this particular problem. We have a number of videos that really focus on resolving very specific printer problems. But there are a number of printer problems that always seem to crop up. They're very common issues. And the spooling service is one of those. If you go look at the spooling service, you'll be able to go into the services in your computer, and you'll be able to see the spooler. And you'll be able to know if it's started or not. Sometimes restarting that spooler can be all you really need to get things going. You stop the spooler here, and you start it again. And you see if that doesn't free things up and get things running again. You might also run into a situation where you, you have something in the queue that is corrupted, and it's causing a problem. It just won't leave the queue. It won't print out. It won't go to the printer. So one of the things that you can do is go to the top thing that's in the queue and just delete it, And once you've or clear out everything in the queue. And once you've cleared it out, restart your print spooler. And most of the time, that will resolve some of those nagging spooler issues. You also want to be sure you're using the right printer drivers. The driver that you're using in Windows has to exactly match the model number of the printer that you're using. That's because print drivers have information in there about how the printer language is expected to be, how many paper trays does the printer have, does it support color or just black and white. And if any of these things are off, you may end up getting some corrupted information or printouts that don't quite look right on the other side. Here's a drastic example of what I mean. This on the left side is a printer driver of an Epson Laser Action Laser 1000. On this side is an HP LaserJet. And even though these are printer drivers, you can see the tabs across the top look exactly the same. What's contained within these individual device settings is very, very different. So you might have font mismatches. You might have problems with paper tray problems. If you don't have exactly the right print driver, just make sure they're synced up and that you're running exactly the same, same kind of print driver as the printer that you're printing to. We call it the blue screen of death, but it's really something called a Windows stop error. The blue screen of death is something you really don't want to see. Because when this occurs, there's no recovery. Your system has completely stopped. And now you're going to have to power your computer down and power it back up again to get things running again. But don't power it down too quickly. There's some important information you should look for on that very nasty blue screen of death that might help you troubleshoot where the problems are occurring. If you happen to miss it, that's OK. The information that's in there is also written to your event log. And occasionally, you'll be able to take the information from the blue screen or from the event log and find the information you need to resolve where the problem's really occurring. If you look at the blue screen of death, here it is, this nasty blue screen. You can see there are specific sections of information that can be very, very useful to you. It tells you which file happened to cause this particular problem. There is a description here that may not make much sense. For instance, this one is page fault in non-paged area. All right, I have no idea what that means. It obviously is a bad thing, because that's why this blue screen is here. But that's the information we can now plug into Google, take to the manufacturer of this particular sys file, and find out why am I getting a page fault associated with this. This information down here on the type of stop error and the specific register settings when that occurred, and the, the file itself and the other details in here may also be useful for the manufacturer of the software or the driver or the problematic file to really determine where it's coming off the tracks and giving you this blue screen. Sometimes a blue screen is much preferred to something like a lockup. When you're locking up the computer, it's now completely stopped. You can't, can't get any error messages. Your mouse isn't moving. The keyboard isn't working. There's really not much that's usually written to the event log. Your system just comes to a grinding halt, and there's no recovery from that. At least with a blue screen, you kind of got an idea of where the problem was occurring from. With a lockup, you really don't have much. 
But when it locks up to your user interface, that doesn't necessarily mean that the computer has stopped working. So check hard drive lights, see if status lights are still working. Uh, hit Control Delete, maybe that'll bring it back. Hit your Num Lock key or your Caps Lock key and see if your keyboard still responds to some of those things. You may be able to tell whether it's really a hard lockup or not. If you recently updated or patched your computer or you added new drivers, maybe now's the time to back off of those or check to see if it's been done recently. If you're running some really, really old drivers, maybe it's time to update those. And you might also want to think back to when this problem wasn't occurring. I wasn't having this problem last week. Well, maybe I should go back to a restore point from that time and re restore back the configuration of my machine from a week ago, see if the problem's still occurring. If we, it's still occurring at that point, maybe we should focus our efforts on the hardware. We may have something with our computer that happens to be going bad, or maybe reverting to a restore point has actually resolved the problem for us. Occasionally, you'll run into a problem using a device. Maybe your mouse has stopped working. You plug in a hard drive to the USB port. You can't see it. Something's not quite right with the devices. Fortunately, we have the Windows Device Manager that can tell us a lot of information about whether perhaps an Ethernet controller is not configured correctly. That type of information can be really useful for determining what the problem is. Do I now need to get a different driver for this Ethernet controller? Do I need to enable it or disable it? And that'll help me resolve the problem with that specific device that's there. Maybe just by adding a driver, I can fix the issue. Or it will tell me that even with the right driver, Windows can't communicate to that hardware properly. Maybe the issue in our case is a hardware problem. There's a few things to look out for when you're installing applications. One is to make sure that you don't have any open files. If you've installed a program before, you may have seen something like this that says, it's recommended that you close all other applications before starting setup. And that's because if a file is open, the installation program may not be able to write to it, and then you may abort the entire application, or it may not install properly. This may also require that you stop some services. So you need to be very mindful when you're installing an application of exactly what it's writing to. You also want to check that the application you're installing is correct for the operating system you're installing it to. For instance, the Windows XP versus Windows Vista. Just because a program works in Windows XP doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work properly in Windows Vista and vice versa. Also, if this is a 64-bit application, it needs to install on a 64-bit operating system. You can't take that 64-bit app and try to run it on a 32-bit operating system. It just isn't going to work. Some of the more annoying problems are those when you start up your computer and you get an error message that something isn't quite right. These usually appear right after you've logged into the computer. If you try a different username and you don't get an error, then one of the things you'll know is that this particular startup error is just associated with that one user. Now we need to find out, is this a Windows problem? Is it an application problem? Even if the title bar and the information within the error doesn't point you to what application it is, you might want to go to the event log. There's probably an entry in the event log that specifies exactly the application that was having a problem starting up. And if it's a message that just seems a little odd and you can't quite figure out what it is, Try typing that into Google. You may be surprised to find that what you're looking for has already been documented by somebody else. Let's see what we can remember with our common operational issues. Our first question is, what is one method for moving a stuck print job out of the queue and getting it off to the printer? Well, you know that we already spent some time on that slide looking at the print spooler. Because if the print spooler has a problem, then none of those print jobs are ever going to make it over to the printer. How can you confirm the operation of a device? There is one place you can go in Windows that will tell you definitively if that device is working properly, and that is the device properties in your device manager. And the last question is, where can you find the blue screen of death information after you've already rebooted and the blue screen of, of death information is no longer on the screen? Well, you just go to the event log, and you'll be able to find a breakdown of exactly what appeared on that screen and the details you'll need to help troubleshoot that problem. 
Well, that covers the things we needed to know for our 22702 section 2.4. We've gone through printing problems and blue screen errors and other operational problems that you'll commonly run into. Hopefully now you have an idea of some places you can start to help solve those issues. If you'd like to watch any of our absolutely free videos, you'd like to participate in our message boards or much more, you can visit our website. Come visit us at freeaplots.com.